Hello everyone and welcome to another custom figure showcase and another edition, as you voted for on Twitter, of my You Will Obey Me, uh, my ongoing master custom series. But I'm sure some of you are going to be wondering, um, although I don't know why I'm saying that because you will have seen the intro, but for those wondering, this is of course the Tsun Master. But for those wondering exactly who the Tsun Master is, well he's a bit of a controversial uh, incarnation. Because you see, the Sun Master first appeared in the novel First Frontier, which is one of the New Virgin Adventures novels. Now, many people, including myself, debate the canonicity of the New Virgin Adventures novel due to their um, continuity and uh, errors, and continuity errors, and all of that, uh, uh, between the classic series and the new series. Um, so personally, I like to believe that some elements are canon and some aren't. I'm sure some people will say they definitely are, some people will say they definitely aren't, and some people will say, well, you can't take some elements uh, as canon and you can't take some as and some not, but it's my own, that's what I choose to do, so it's open to interpretation. But personally, I like to think that the Tsun Master is one of the things that is canon. Um, so who is the Tsun Master? Well, the Tsun Master is born from the uh, plot of First Frontier, which features the Anthony Ainley incarnation of the Master um, in the now failing Tremus body, uh, using the Tsunites from the Tsun people to stabilize and possibly remove the Trachonite DNA from the Ainley body, which turns it once again, somehow, into a full Time Lord body with uh, a regeneration cycle. He is then shot by Ace and regenerates into the Tsun incarnation. So that makes the Tsun incarnation an entirely new incarnation and full Time Lord body, not a stolen body, unlike the um, Ainley body. So it's certainly a very interesting idea. However, it is later revealed in a further story that the Tsunites uh, uh, begin to fail and he, for some reason, again, the science is very convoluted, he reverts back to the failing Ainley body uh, he effectively degenerates somehow and once again is left in the failing Ainley body and then due to the events of the Big Finish story dust breeding, uh, the Ainley body is stripped from him by the warp core, once again leaving him in the decayed beavers incarnation. Um, but so yes, it's a very certainly a very interesting idea that this Tsun incarnation does exist. Uh, I know a lot of people um, do think that the Tsun incarnation, and I thought this originally, is in fact the uh, incarnation seen in the TV movie. However, uh, this is certainly doesn't seem to be true as the events of uh, the story in which the master loses the Tsun body uh, takes place well before the TV movie and behind the scenes footage of the TV movie shows that Gordon Tipple, the actor who played uh, the master in the TV movie was originally supposed to do the opening narration and he used his native Canadian accent, which means that he is most likely not the Sun Master, and he is certainly not the Ainley Master, as many people believe. Um, so that's uh, a very um, interesting, different way of looking at it. But um, anyway, we do not have any visual appearances of this Master. He is only described in the book First Frontier. Uh, and I believe he was also described briefly, possibly in the uh, the book uh, Housewarming as well, but it was mainly First Frontier is where he first appeared. Now, visually, in terms of face and things like that, uh, the appearance was based on Basil Rathbone as he appeared in The Adventures of Robin Hood, according to the author of First Frontier. Um, but the actual description of this master is thusly. The master had a high forehead, glossy moustache, neat beard, an aristocratic nose, and a lean face, and spoke in a rich, cultured voice. He wore a Van Dyke beard, a dark Italian-designed suit, a silk shirt, and a cravat with a silver pin of uh, a silver bird of prey tie pin. Uh, so obviously, I have had to use some um, uh, artistic license with this in terms of trying to get him to look. Uh, similar to his description and so overall what I have here uh, starting from the uh, feet up we have I believe these are a um, I believe these might be in fact I'm not entirely sure where these uh, legs are from I apologize does it tell me on the bottom any information nope right I can't tell you where those legs are from I'm sorry I should know but I don't they don't I don't think there are third doctors I'm not entirely sure whose those are um, moving on, <laughs> um, we have a, um, I believe this is a Marcus Scarman uh, coat. I'm not sure whose the arms are. 
Uh, I think the arms might be a third doc. Yes, the arms are from a third doctor. The um, the uh, waistcoat and shirt are from a um, Scaroff figure. And then obviously the eagle eyed amongst you will notice that the head is in fact a 12th doctor. But I decided to go with that head because it fit the description of him having sort of quite a lean face. And not looking unlike Basil Rathbone has to be said, I have sculpted on a little bit more hair. Um, but that's pretty much all I've done for it. I decided to go with the red colouring because um, it, it set, well, it describes it as a dark Italian suit. And uh, I put Italian suit into Google and it comes up with any number of things. So I just decided to sort of get a bit creative in terms of the colours. And I, I liked the idea of it having a sort of three tone. But I liked the red because we haven't really ever had sort of um, proper what I would class default red outfits for the Masters. All the incarnations of the Masters we've seen, they've always been sort of very black and dark. So I thought about doing it completely black, but I wanted to add in a little splash of colour. So I thought the red uh, fits quite um, quite well in terms of the in terms of the look. And you know, obviously. Obviously, I'm going to say this because this is this is my view of it. But I think this sort of does fit quite well as to how the Sun Master would have looked because I can certainly see, um, I can certainly see this sort of definitely being an incarnation of the Master, just in terms of his in terms of his look and his description in the novel is very good. He's very sort of um, like I said, it's very sort of dark. The rich, cultured voice is certainly very reminiscent of the incarnations of Delgado and Ainley. So. Um, it is definitely a master that I think works very well, and it's certainly one that I count as part of my uh, lineup. Obviously, as I said, you know, it's he is open to debate, but um, I personally take uh, this element of First Frontier as canon. Um, he is a brand new incarnation, um, which certainly makes it very interesting. Um, obviously, he's then uh, open to debate as to the incarnations and things like that. Obviously, uh, I will link them in the description below and in the pinned comment. I have done. My own trilogy of videos about the um, masters and the different incarnations uh, so please go and check that out uh, specifically part three because the first two parts uh, do contain errors so part three is the one that has all the um, lineup as I see it um, I hope you find it very interesting it was certainly very interesting for me to make and as obviously it's always very interesting to keep adding bits to as new incarnations of the master crop up or will hopefully crop up again in future um, but that brings to a close another custom figure showcase and another episode of You Will Obey Me. As always, I hope you all enjoy this video. Like, favorite, subscribe, share, it really helps me out a lot. Be sure to check out the description below for a link to my Patreon. I'm doing my very first figure animation and you can get involved. There is exclusive content and rewards for those who do so and funding my Patreon in any way gets your name at the end of my videos. I salute you all and I will see you with another video very soon.